In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the upcoming fall, why we expect it to be extremely cold in the eastern United States. We're going to be taking a look at those analogs for the fall, seeing what those have to say, and all of the above. Uh, now, before we get into things, I have to tell you guys about my business, Prestige Weather. I did want to mention to you guys, my new business prestige weather has been doing so well. So many of you have been joining and it's just been great to be able to share extra weather knowledge with you guys. You can find that in the pinned comment and description down below. We just did an early release of our actual July forecast. So that goes for the temperature precipitation and overall forecast. We released that early in there for our premium members. So if you want to gain access to that and everything we're talking about today uh, and get clear, concise information early on about what my forecast forecast is for July. Be sure to join in the description and pinned comment down below. We have that information for you guys down there where you can join today. It's only $5 a month, very affordable, about the same price as a cup of coffee. Uh, definitely going to be worthwhile. We also deliver forecasts directly to you. We're calling you guys once a week for limited time at least. We're thinking about releasing it permanently, but we're going to be calling you guys once a week if you like, of course. Uh, to give you guys a forecast for anywhere that you might be located. So if you are located in the middle of nowhere, we will still give you a call. We'll still get the weather information for you and give you a look at the week ahead one-on-one -on -one directly to you. So it's really, really cool. Be sure to check it out again in the description and pin comment down below. Now, here we are taking a look at the previous 30 days. I want to talk about why things have been cold and kind of why we expect it to continue uh, through the coming weeks and even months, as I mentioned, as we're expecting a colder fall as well. So as we take a look at things, you can see that we do have colder temperatures along the eastern seaboard. Same thing for the southwest here. And this is about 60, 75% of the nation right here in these two blue areas that have been colder than normal this summer. And as you can see, two of the areas that have been warmer is up here in kind of the northern plains and down here in the south central United States. These are the two areas we've been dealing with that. As we move on, and we're just going to take a look here at the normal weather stuff that we have going on. I want to take a look here quickly at uh, the day today. Uh, so as you can see, we do expect more thunderstorms here for the northeastern corner of the nation. Same thing here happening along the Rockies and some of those plains just to the east of the Rockies. We do have another low up here, and this is causing more storminess here for the plains as well. Uh, in Nebraska, the Dakotas, a little bit of Kansas and Iowa happening as well. So there is multiple areas here where we are seeing... Uh, some thunderstorm activity today and as we move into tomorrow which will be wednesday the 28th we could see more storms for the northeast same story here for the rockies into the upper midwest again we do have a couple of these storms that are diving down here for some of the deeper south kind of areas here in the gulf states by the time we reach thursday the 29th here we could see more storms moving northward and then back south here so we can see that this is kind of bowing over and this is mostly due to this high pressure that we have in this area uh, i know there's a low here but for oh, overall we've had a ridge and high pressure in this area um and this is causing the jet stream to basically do this over top of it uh, and that's why we're seeing those storms kind of avoid this area and just dive around that is for the most part what we have been seeing uh, and that high pressure system looks to kind of stay in place by the time we're reaching Friday here, which will be the 30th of June. We can see that there is more storms for the East Coast and then kind of stretching over this area. Um, but again, avoiding this pocket here where we have that higher pressure overall in place for Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, and Oklahoma. Now, by the time we're reaching Saturday, the first here, we can see more storms moving in to the Southeast, even the Northeast here. Uh, we could see plenty of these storms spreading in. So potentially here an, a stormier weekend ahead. By Sunday the 2nd here, we could see more storms up and down the East Coast. Uh, definitely taking a look at some pretty active thunderstorm activity in there. Uh, by the time reaching Monday the 3rd as well, we see this same pocket is where we see most of the activity. So stretching up the Gulf and East Coast there. Uh, really, really interesting pattern we find ourselves in. And for the evening of the 4th of July... I showed this yesterday, but basically east of this line here in the United States, it's looking like there's a good chance that you might see some spotty thunderstorms, and it's going to be really hard to predict exactly where is and isn't going to see those. So it's going to be really hard to give a forecast other than there's a chance of rain on the 4th of July evening for most of these areas for now. We might get more uh, clear of a depiction of what to expect later on, but for now, this is how broad that 
outlook is and it does look quite stormy actually as well now as we can see as we move on towards the sixth and seventh time frame we continue to get berated with storms here in the east so this is going to be a trend obviously through the upcoming pattern that's becoming apparent now as we take a look at the total precipitation we can see that we do start to get some down here where we have that death ridge going on or whatever you want to call it so the high pressure the ridge the heat wave that is going to start to get more precipitation in there overall eventually uh, but we do get a lot of this bowing over and that's going to cause an above average amount for these pockets here because it's bowing over this region and all kind of hitting the same place the northeast is also going to have a significantly far above average amount of precipitation happening just with how many storm systems we see move through that area there now as we take a look here at the temperature pattern we're taking a look at the long range we showed this yesterday but if you missed that video we're showing it today this is the actually i gotta refresh this because i didn't refresh this since yesterday so here we go now we're taking a look at the right one actually it's the same one i don't know anyway so we're taking a look at the 26 let's just move it forward 27 through the fourth how about that and we could see some colder air here definitely some colder air here where things have been historically cold and then this is where we've seen that historic heat for texas oklahoma new mexico especially that is where things have been extremely hot as you can see we start to see some warmth building in the central states by the time we're reaching around the 10th time frame and that is going to be something to watch as we see for july might be really really hot but if you notice all the way through mid-august we still have these neutral to below average temperatures here in the eastern states and that is going to prevail and really really give us an interesting summer overall if that does happen that way and look at how much heat we have here for the central united states that is far above average and certainly something that we're also going to be watching for so overall the next 46 days look something like this um definitely the only area that looks like it might be below average or average is the eastern states and then the furthest above average here is the south central into kind of the upper midwest now here was the analogs that we showed yesterday for july and as you could see cooler temperatures is what the analogs would show but we only really expect this for the eastern seaboard i think that this will most likely not verify just because it's not looking that way right now for sure uh, the uh, precipitation we see an above average amount for this pocket here and this is fairly on point you know with what we're expecting to see in the upcoming pattern i'd say the only thing is that we do get quite a bit still for the southeast here um so that might not be far below average but certainly this is very interesting and and fairly on point i would say now as we talked about we're going to be showing the fall analogs here which is going to be for september through november and as you can see we do anticipate cooler air heading in for the fall here for both the central and the eastern united states with a positive pna pattern which would look like this and this sends all the cold around that heat bubble uh, and causes colder air to dive in for the central and eastern states uh, now as we take a look here at our precipitation analogs here uh, according to the same analogs we would get a lot of storms moving through the southeast corridor certainly something to be watching um, and this could mean a lot of precipitation a lot of cooler air is upcoming in the fall this year for september through november anyway guys thank you so much for watching the video again you can check out the july official july forecast early uh, by checking it out in prestige weather so you can join by using the pinned comment and description down below i'd love to talk to you guys in there and see you there be sure to subscribe for daily uploads just like this one also you can hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it leave a comment down below and i'll see you guys in the next video